So listen, there are 82 people joining the call and uh, we are so grateful for you all taking the time today to join us. Um, I hope you're all well. I hope you're all staying healthy mentally and physically. I hope you're all following instructions to isolate and I hope you're all managing to keep some perspective in uh, these strange and scary times. So uh, one thing I'm a big believer in is the power of community. And it's just great to see so many faces and leverage this awesome technology to get together and keep some sense of community going through, um, through these times. I have some thanks. I want to thank Darren Newland and Aaron Petershik. They are amazing people here in Seattle who have created this community called the Learner Palooza community. And I'm a huge fan of this community. It's practitioners doing learning work and learning leadership in the Puget Sound area. And I just love the energy and the passion that they can kind of distill when they get people together. So we'll, we'll hear from Darren later on, but uh, I know a lot of you, of you have come from your affiliation with that organization. So go learn a palooza. Second thanks are to uh, Redfin and Karen uh, Dowdell Sandford, who's gonna be on our panel later on. She very kindly, uh, without knowing anyone at Mandel or knowing me, offered an amazing facility for us to have a community event, the community event we're doing today. Um, it's a beautiful facility in their brand new offices in downtown Seattle. For those of you who don't know, Redfin is a digital real estate agency and it's a company that's really on fire here in the Seattle area. And they had a lovely space where we were all supposed to be now drinking coffee and sharing stories together, um, but very, very gracious hosts. And so I want to say thank you to them. Uh, third, I want to say thank you to Mandel Corporation. The idea that we had here was Mandel are a sponsor of the Learner Palooza event in the summer. And they'd offered to come to Seattle, get a group of people together, sort of mid-winter, and uh, invest in the learning community. Basically a shoemaker's children type story. Let's skill up ourselves for a change. And uh, we plan to do this half-day event at Redfin uh, with uh, Mandel sharing really their wisdom and their smarts and giving us a sample of what they do for a living, which is make great communicators. Um, of course, uh, we had to pivot like everyone's having to pivot. And it turns out that not only do they do great workshops in person, but they also have a pretty sophisticated set of online offerings as well. And um, we can all be grateful for that. So uh, Mandel uh, and team, you're going to meet some of the team today. Um, amazing support of this community and uh, like everybody else, uh, figuring out how to pivot uh, in these strange times. Um, let me see. I think that's all the thanks I wanted to do. Let me uh, go to the next slide and just talk about the flow of the event. Um, we are going to going next to the actual training session, uh, the kind of meat of, of the session. And again, brought to you by Mandel in the spirit of uh, investing in you for a change uh, and helping you get trained for a change. Uh, then we're going to have a short break uh, for bio break and coffee and whatnot. And then we're gonna have a panel discussion. I've got a really fantastic group of people who've agreed to share their philosophies and their, the actions they're taking um, at the moment. So we're gonna have a discussion with a panel and I really wanna have a broad Q and A discussion. Uh, I've never done this before on the, on, the, on the Zoom platform, but I really wanna hear from all of you on what you've seen going on, uh, what resources you're looking at, um, and and uh, just connect, let's connect as best we can through this format. Um, unfortunately, we can't buy you lunch, which was the original plan, and, um, but we'll try and figure that out. At some point in the future, we'll do, this, we'll do this in person. Two last things that I wanted to say. One was, when we moved online, we moved away from our constraint of having just 50 people, which was the space we had uh, in the room. And so, as you can see, we've got 86 people online, over 120 people have registered. Um, we'll make the recording available. So there's kind of one lesson learned there is there, there are trade-offs, of course, but there are also benefits uh, of delivering in this modality. So uh, that's, that's that. And then last but not least, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Chris Peary. Uh, I am a 
ex-learning leader at Microsoft and at Oracle and at ATD, at the Association of uh, Training and Development. Uh, I now run my own business based here in Seattle and uh, do some research and a podcast called Learning is the New Working. Go check it out. Uh, and um, I'm going to be hosting this uh, panel discussion later today. And um, again, thanks to everyone who made it possible. And thanks to all of you for taking the time and, uh, and being a part of the community. So I'm going to hand over to uh, Brad. Brad Holst is the Principal and Executive Director of Communication Strategy and Innovation at Mandel Corporation. He's designed many, many, many of the assets and tools that Mandel bring uh, to the challenge of helping people be great communicators. Uh, he's a passionate and very, very busy executive coach as well. Uh, and he teaches these methodologies all around the world. He's written and contributed articles to Harvard Business Review, to Harvard Managed Mentors video series, and to the Training Industry Magazine. He lives in one of my favorite parts of the world, the San Francisco Bay Area, with his family and his Labradors. And the little known fact about Brad is he is a former Disneyland Jungle Cruise skipper. So if things get out of hand on this call, I'm pretty sure he'll know what to do. Um, I am going to hit mute and I'm going to uh, learn from Brad. And uh, thanks again, everyone, for joining us. I I'll, see you, uh, uh, I'll see you in a little bit of time. Hey, thank you, Chris. And thank you so much, Chris, for your leadership and making this event happen. We couldn't have done this without you. And thank you to everyone who took time out of your day to join us, both in the Puget Sound area, as well as people from all over the, the country, literally, that have had a chance to drop in today. You know, there was a 2017 study that suggested, uh, based on their research, that we spend more than half of our workday actively communicating. Not a surprise. And that same study went on to say that 15% of that time is wasted due to inefficient, ineffective communication. And what's the cost of that? Well, if you saw the study, it works out to about $11,000 per employee per year, or if you've got 5,000 people in your organization, a $5 million productivity opportunity. But the impact on an organization is even bigger than that. You know, if you look at the lower right of the slide, there's a number of ways this can hurt you. I mean, what's the cost when a salesperson is out communicated by a competitor? What happens when employees aren't able to communicate innovative ideas in a way that other people understand them and hear them? And in times of urgent opportunity or crisis, like we're in today, you know, the cost can be, really slowing down our response to change unless our messaging, our communications are really clear, really concise, and very compelling. Now more than ever, you know, your employees need the skills required to consistently be heard. And this isn't new to the learning co community at all. The fact that success or failure in business, success or failure in a career, oftentimes depends on how effectively an employee is able to communicate in high stakes business situations. You know, these include situations like the ones on this slide and take a moment and look at those. I mean, real quickly, just a, a, a yes on the chat panel. How many of you can relate to at least 10 of the things in your world that's on this list? And then think what's not on the list. Your list might actually be longer than that. But how do these situations play out in real life? Well, if we think about it, there's you, there's that need to be heard, and there's that listener, which could be one, it could be many that you need to influence. And you need to think about where does success come from? Where, where do you decide whether you're going to be effective with your communications? Do you decide that? Well, you can influence that. But it's the listener that ultimately decides whether or not you're effective. So that's why we look at these high-stake communication situations. We really call them a moment of truth. And in that moment of truth, there's literally three things you need to make happen for the people or the person you're trying to influence. One, they simply need to understand what it is you're saying. 
and you think about it right now in this session today, look at all the digital distractions you have at your fingertips. If for whatever reason I'm not holding your attention, you have so many other things you could be doing right now. People check out almost immediately. And of course, they even check out when we're face to face. It's amazing, live meetings, people go to their phones. So one, you need to be easy to understand. But that's just table stakes, because if people understand you, they're immediately looking, where's the value in what you're communicating? Where's the value to my organization? Where's the value to me? And have you ever been in a situation where someone's trying to influence you and you understand, and if what they're saying is true, you see value, but you're just going, huh, I don't know. Because there's one more thing, one more thing. You've got to trust. Understand, see value, trust. And I want you to think for a moment how quickly we start making decisions about things like this. Is it measured in days? Is it measured in hours? Is it measured in minutes? And I'm guessing all of you would probably know, yes, Aaron, thank you. It's measured in seconds. You know, I love how Malcolm Gladwell spells this out in blank, how quickly we make decisions on it. So this decision starts being made literally in the few, few seconds of the communication. And that's why if we looked at an underlying theme for what we're going to be talking about today, you know, the theme could be moment of truth readiness. And with that spirit in mind, let's take a look at the agenda for the, about the next 30 minutes. You know, our goal today, if you're looking at the slide, on the topic of communicating change, it's not only to illustrate the skills and the tools you need to effectively communicate change, but in this short amount of time, and by the way, we thought we had 90 minutes in Seattle. I'm just blessed to have 30 minutes a day. And in that short amount of time, I want you to give you a personal experience with this. I invite you to play along. I want you to take it for a test drive. Actively participate. And, and if you do, and, and of course, if you like what you did, that's very important, you'll be able to immediately apply what we share with you today back on the job to help drive change in your world. And by the way, if you have any questions, Diane Y mentioned it before, please type them in the chat panel. We've got the fabulous Diane Burgess Faber, Faber you know, my well, I have a lot of favorite people at Mandel, but she's one of my very favorites, and I know she's very active in the Learnapalooza uh, community. So know when you're typing a question, Diane is going to be typing away. And thanks for that little hi there, Di. Also in chat, if you haven't downloaded it already, uh, I know we talked about it at the beginning, is you may want to download this tool we call it a personal communication framework. You may even, if you have a printer handy, print out a copy. It's an e-tool, but just print them one out so you can refer to it, or have it up somewhere you know, on your desktop where you can use it, because we're going to be actively using this particular tool. And one more thing you should know about what we're going to do today. What we're going to share works around the world. You know, if you look at the stars, that isn't the number of Mandel trainers, but those are geographic areas we have Mandel trainers. So we're doing this work in Asia, South America, Europe, North America, Latin America, and with appropriate cultural adaptations, as you would expect, everything we're working out here works around the world. So let's dive in. Let's get to this. And let's start with the all-important thinking about what the listener, what the people you're trying to influence to change, what they're thinking about. And we all know these are not normal times. You know, we're in a time where massive global chain ha change has been thrust upon us. And I, I've always been a fan of this Darwin quote, or at least it was attributed to him. It's, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It's the one that's most adaptable to change. And I want you to think for a moment. So what do your employees, the people that you're trying to influence a change, what is it they care about in this world of COVID-19? And you know where my head goes? It goes back to Abraham Maslow, Psych 101, and Hierarchy of Needs. You know, I'm sure you're all familiar with this pyramid. Where do you think most people are living right now and trying to work? I can tell you in the Bay Area where we've been in lockdown for a while, and by the way, I'm not in an office. I am so missing getting out to client sites that I put up a green screen and put up an office background just so I feel like I'm working, 
I'm, I'm, I'm really missing all that fun of being out with client sites and working with them. So I turned my off, home office into one. But at the Bay Area, you know, we're living at survival. Oh, my God, don't have enough toilet paper. Got to go buy everything Costco has. Got to buy a month's worth of food. And then once we get that covered, we're in the security and we're kind of bouncing back and forth. And think about what that impact has on engagement. Well, it's not good. Not this week. It could change for the better as we adapt and get used to whatever the new normal is. But it's not good right now. So how do you communicate change when your listener is bouncing back and forth between survival and security? Well, first let's take a look at what not to do. And that's send out a what message without even thinking about the needs of your people. And what I mean by that is here's what I need you to do. And why do we do this even though we know it's probably not effective? Well, we're all busy. We're all under pressure. We just want to get it done. But think about why this isn't a good way to influence change, especially in times like today. What's missing? It's the why. Why do I need to do this? That why needs to be linked to the things that the listeners care about. In, in other words, you've got to sell the problem first. If you can sell the problem on opportunity, people want to buy whatever you're suggesting. And I, I, not saying that in the sales world, we're all buying and selling. And what else is missing for this message? What's in it for me? What's the value to me and my organization? So typically when we get in this fast paced, just trying to adapt to change, it's what message is all over the place when the listener really wants a why and a with them. All three components are mission critical. If you want to successfully influence others to change, you have to do it not just with logic, but also with empathy. Empathy works. And when you have a good listener-centered why and a good listener-centered with them, empathy. And all of us human beings were hardwired for it. It doesn't cost anything. Actually, it only costs something if we forget to use it. Then it can be very expensive. And what we're going to do is look at a, a globally proven personal communication framework, the one you all downed, downloaded, that makes it really easy to ensure that you consistently communicate the why the what and the whiff and the what's in it for me when you're trying to influence others to action. And it's more important today than ever. So when we think about creating high value messages, let's first acknowledge the challenge that you're all up against. How many of you have really easy things to do in your job and deal with really simple topics that have really obvious answers and it's really easy to craft clear communications? I'm guessing that would be no one. Absolutely no one. We all live in a very complicated world, and it makes it really hard to crisp, to c construct crisp, clear messages on that. And the way we approach that, if you can't have clarity of thinking, there's not going to be cl any clarity in your communication. So that's where this personal communication framework comes up, and what our users love about this. And just curious, how many people on the call are familiar with our SCI PAB. So if you just again uh, raise your hand real quickly, let us see that. And it looks like a lot of you are. Becky's a big fan. Thank you, Becky. Been using it for over 10 years. God, this stuff melts my heart. Thank you. Uh, but what our users like about it is how efficient it is. In one simple process, you are going to analyze the communication situations and the world of the listeners that you're trying to influence, and it forces you to do that. You're going to organize a message, so you're going to get all those complex thoughts in a nice, concise, clear way, and ultimately have a way to verbalize that message. All in one process, all in one tool. Easy peasy. And when we break it down, and I want to look at each piece of this, so we're going to do a couple things here. We're going to, one, I'm going to give a high-level overview. Then I'm going to give you a little more detail on it with an example, and I'm going to ask you to create your own SCI PAB for a listener or listeners that you need to influence right now. Do something real on it. So I'm going to invite you to do that. I'll give you a little bit of work time where it can work as we go through it. But one of the first things you want to look at is on the left-hand side of the tool, you want to be looking, okay, what's my topic? Who's my audience? Real clear on that. But then you need to be laser focused on what the intention is of this communication. What is it that you want to achieve? 
And some people, if it's too broad, if it's too ill-defined, so is your communication. What is it I want to achieve? What do I want people to do as a result of that? And then the bottom one, very important, just a little thought about the people I'm trying to influence, what are their needs? What's going on in their world as it relates to my topic? And you don't even need to write this down as long as you're thinking about it. Then you're set up to start putting together your story. And if you look at the top line, SCI, Situation, Complication, Implication, that answers that all-important why question. So we start with why. Then the next level, PAB, Position, Action, Benefit, that's where we address the what. What do you want people to do? And what's the with them? What's in it for them? SCI, PAB. And then if you look at the bottom, since SCI, PAB is most often a one to two minute, very high level message, it's your core story, it's your thesis, it anchors this, but there's probably more discussion that needs to happen. What's your agenda for that? And then at the bottom, you can plan out what are the top three points I want to make sure we cover so people end up realizing this is a good idea. And it's three item agenda, three point agenda. Not that you should never go to four or occasionally might need to even go to five, but whenever possible, try to stick to three. And I, I, I could go on for the next 15 minutes about the power of three. Just Google rule of three to communications and it's what we remember, it's what we process, it establish patterns, one, two, three. But let's Let's jump into this even further. This is, this is your turn now. So I'm going to do a deeper dive into each one of these and give you an example. And I would like you either on the tool on your device you're using, or if you printed it out, maybe you could sketch on it. If you have post-it notes, we love post-it notes at Mandel. makes it really easy to brainstorm. Or even if you just want to do this, if you, you take a piece of paper and put six boxes on it. But I really want you to actually apply this as we're going through it so you really get a feel how this works. So think about that important idea you need to communicate. Envision the listener or listeners. I mean, really envision, not a faceless group of employees, but who is it you're trying to influence? And then use that tool to create your message. So if we look at that top line, the SCI, this is the why. My experience, this is where most messaging that's intended to influence other fails, is the failure to articulate the why or a compelling why. So we want to start with a top of mind issue. It's kind of the once upon a time in your story, an important issue. You want heads to nod. It's kind of like this morning when I said half of your day is spent communicating, three hours in real time, hour and a half on email. Okay. The complication is where tension starts rising. A good story needs tension. Change, we need tension. We need something to do that. So in the complication, we talk about a change, a problem, an opportunity that's arisen. So for example, if we spend half our day communicating, uh, the, the complication here is that 15% of our time is lost due to ineffective, inefficient communication. Okay, so you carry this through, that's a, that's a problem. So what's the impact? What's the implication? What's the so what for the listener? Well, it means in your organization, the annual cost is about 11000 per employee, much more depending on the role that can be on it. And on top of that, good ideas oftentimes fail in that environment. So you see the flow there? It's very self-serving. It's essentially the SCI I used to open up the session. But we're trying to create that type of arc going into it. And so what I would invite you to do is to one, look at these, what we call transition phrases. I'm gonna leave them up here for you in just a moment. These not only help you articulate an SCI, like currently, and then the challenges, and this will impact. I mean, you, good transition words make it easier to process, but it helps you think. If you think to yourself about your topic, as you know, that's a good situation statement. If you think what the challenge is, that's probably a good complication. So I find these really help people put this together. I, we will make a version of the slides available. I see people asking about that. We will make sure that something goes out on that. But here's what I want you to try right now. And again, whether you're working on a piece of paper with six boxes, whether you're working on your device using the actual tool, or you've printed it, I would like you to, again, think about that issue you need to communicate, the listeners you need to influence, and create the SCI. And you're not writing a script. You just should be triggering, writing some trigger words that capture your thoughts. It's a very high level outline or storyboard. 
Again, you can see the transition phrases below. You can see the definitions here. Let me give you a couple minutes just to put together an SEI. And if you've got a question, put it in chat. Diane and I will be actively looking at it. So has somebody completed their SEI that would be willing to volunteer to share it? Or I should say the way I very positively could put this is would you like to be coached in front of 80 of your best friends? Hi, this is Andrea. Andrea! Where, where, where's home, Andrea? Seattle. Seattle, excellent. I'm in the mm -hmm. Bay Area. Feels like QVC right now. We're having this little pitter patter, <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to sell you a communication tool as we get into it. But could you just, and thank you for volunteering. Can you just tell me what your topic is and the audience for it is, and and what you're trying to achieve? Don't share your message yet. Just give us what's your topic, who's your audience, mm -hmm. and what is it you're trying to achieve? What's your intent? Okay, my topic is a request to, and in the audience, a group of. Uh, of engineers that I held a session, a learning session this morning. And what is it you hope to achieve with them? What, what is it that you want to, what's your intention for having this communication? Mm -hmm. The request is for them to join uh, an accountability team following okay. the session. So if it goes well, they're going to want to join this accountability team. So group, yes. you've all heard her background situation. And then if you could, Andrea, don't worry about trying to present this in a conversational way right now. All we want to do is kind of hear your thinking. So literally you could say, take a pause, look at your situation and say, the situation is, and then pause, the complication is. So could you just walk us through the SCI? Okay, well, um, I wrote, today was our first session, because I'm holding five. So today was our first session, and the follow-up request was to join our team accountability group um because this will mean that you are um you are connected so i didn't finish uh, this is where i thought that this will mean that um you will hold each other accountability and you will practice the exercise that uh i shared in the session okay so let's go back and look at it again what is just the situation give us the situation one more time Today was our session. Okay. And that's a classic situation statement, and kind of heads are nodding. And mm -hmm. I might say a little bit more. What's the session about? Just today's our session about? Today was our session about uh, teamwork, building about teamwork. teams. Mm -hmm. And then what was your complication? Let's hear that just all by itself. Um, following up on the request that I – made to the uh, participants to join an accountability group. Okay. And let me ask you, let me, let's think about that complication because that sounds mm -hmm. more almost you than about them. So what, okay. what, what is a comp, why is this accountability group needed? What is a problem or opportunity that's going on right now that's created the need for that? Mm -hmm. So I'll go with the opportunity, not a problem. The opportunity okay. is that they have uh, received new learning information, new knowledge, and the opportunity is to practice it, to turn it into a skill. Okay. Practice. And if they don't practice it, what happens? Um, they will forget it and won't enter in their skill set. Okay, and so that's where if I was thinking about your SEI, okay. I'm talking about today we're having that meeting, and I, I'll, mm -hmm. just, I'll just going to mm -hmm. do a very high level. Today we're having that meeting. This is, you know, it's, it's really critically that we practice these skills because if we don't, we're just going to forget about them. So that's just kind of, you think about that SEI arc, you want to mm -hmm. throw it back on the listeners. And I did that very high level. You probably have a little bit more on that. But does that help you kind of think about how you want to position the problem or opportunity for them? Yes, thank you. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. And I would love to do this with everybody except – I'm watching the clock tick down, and we're all virtual here. But, I, Andrea, I really want to say thank you for sharing. Can you hear the deafening virtual applause from all, your, <laughs> all the other people on that? But thank you so much for doing that. You're welcome. And let's, thank you. let's continue working through this. And I think the SCI is by far the hardest and the most important part of the message to put together. And remember, it's about the listener. Now, take a minute and complete your position action benefit. 
So again, the position, this is our recommendation. This is our point of view. This is our idea. This is at a, at a 10,000 meter level. We're, we're, if there's one piece of that where we're trying to solve something, it is the position. So for example, against that communication problem in the SCI, I'm going to recommend SCI PAB. It's efficient. It's effective. It works around the planet. The action is what I want the listener to do. Sometimes my position might be a big action, a big recommendation. Here's what I specifically want you to do, either during and after our talk. So in this case, I want you to learn it, and I want you to test it. Remember I said take it out for a test drive? And what's in it for you? What's the benefit? Well, if you'll do that, you'll find it's a quick way to boost productivity, accelerate the pace of business, and to share effectively good ideas. SCI, PAB. Take a minute, just jot down. There's some of the, the transition phrases. Take a moment and jot down your PAB, please. And you're not writing a novel, you want to keep it very high level, just trigger words like an outline. Some people are very visual, use pictures. And if we had more time and we're able to really do this in, in our true virtual classroom experiences, we would be breaking you out in twos and threes with very structured how to deliver your SEI PAB, how to coach that PAB, and it usually happens once you've said something out loud two, maybe three times. That's when you know, do you have a good message or not? You don't know what you have until you say it out loud. Just hearing Andrea share her SCI, so helpful for both of this. Now, in terms of timing here, I'm not going to have you share your PAB. We find this is much more straightforward. Just remember, position might be a recommendation, an idea, something that requires a big action of many. The action is specific to the listener or listeners you're trying to influence. That's one of the things we get the most questions about on there. So let's just talk briefly about executive presence. Because if you've taken the time to, to create the message, you know, if people are going to understand, see value, and trust, that is not only the content, it's how you engage with the content. I would even offer that a, a Email can have executive presence or not. You know, someone who organizes SCI PAB in an email, uses some bold, some white spaces, really kips a crisp, that message has presence. It gets read versus a big block of text or too little information on that. But especially when we think about when we're having to articulate a message. And so here's our Maslow. The goal is to be real, come across as yourself. To do that, you have to be able to maintain composure under pressure. This is not a normal environment to me. I'd love to be face-to-face -face with you guys. It's so much easier here. But I have composure skills that help me function in this environment, energy skills that help me transfer my conviction with the goal is I just want to be real. I just want to come across as my genuine, authentic self. And I want you to look at these composure skills, power of open posture, sustained eye contact, but very importantly, the power of pausing, and especially in this virtual world. You probably recognize one of the most famous sales pitches of the last 12 years, Steve Jobs introducing the iPhone, except you probably can't read this. No punctuation, no capitalization, no white space. And of course, he didn't write it. He delivered it. And would this be actually any better? This speaks to the needs the power of pause. Because pausing for the speaker lives us that moment to be fully present. We can think and breathe. And for the listener, the people on the receiving end, it's the only punctuation we have in our spoken language. Let's talk briefly, again, if you're practicing your SIPAB, practice punctuating each one with pauses. Get the rhythm of the message. Energy skills, well, obviously, with my camera up, I can even do a little movement. Usually that's not a virtual thing, but gestures, vocal and facial animation. Even if webcams aren't up, in today's world they should be, come through in your voice. And again, if you just want to see the power of it, we call this nonverbal self-sabotage. And it's not like we consciously think this is bad, but unconsciously we don't trust. We don't find you confident. Compared to like the model for communication today, which is the TED Talk, 
this is infectious. Notice the open posture, the engagement in the face, everything on that. Do we want to be this people, faces protected, or these people? And I just want to touch on this because I want to wrap up here real quickly. But there is a wonderful app called Ori. There's a free version you can experiment with, App Store or Google Play. And it uses artificial intelligence that gives you instant feedback on things like, if you want to get better at pausing, this tool will help you do it. Uh, so will our workshops too, by the way, virtually. I'm not about these two together, dynamite, absolutely dynamite. So this is something you may want to take a look at if you want to make progress in this area. And one more thing. Think about all the ways you can use SciPad. People, our users find out whether it's spoken or in writing. And just think about putting a SciPad in every e meeting invite so people know why and what we need to produce. Think about structuring your emails that way as well as in the spoken world. And with that, we've hit our three topic areas. I can't stress enough that starts with thinking about what's going on in your listeners' world then message into that, and when you have to grade, do it with your genuine, authentic presence. Uh, I'd like to invite you to come out to the Mandel website for a very specific reason. Uh, yeah, you can learn about all the things we're doing in terms of virtual development over whether it's digital or live virtual training like this, but I really want you to go to our resources tab because when you do, there's a wealth of free information. There's a number of videos. Some of them are the ones we've done together with Harvard. Our blog is heavily described, very practical, lots of useful tips on it. And we have a big library of white paper that are all there for you on that. But I'd be willing to flash the completed document one more time. So there is the completed SCI PAB. Is that the one you're looking for? And I'm going to leave that up for a moment because I want to turn this back to Chris, our host with the most. Hey, Chris, I just want to thank you, and I want to thank everybody for letting me share this with you guys. And, and I know we've got this exciting panel coming up, but uh, thank you. Hey, Dan, the situation is I'm stuck at home. The challenge is that I'm a total extrovert. The implications are this is going to drive me and my family crazy. I think that events like this can really help. So I'd love people to share other ideas. And the benefit is we'll all get through this. How was that? Well this done. This is the new handshake. The new handshake. Bravo. Go Nicely Peary. done. <laughs> Good stuff. Nicely done. Um, thank you. Uh, Brad, it's really great. I mean, it's amazing to watch you uh, perform and bring this thing to life. There was lots of good comments in the chat room. Um, I, I so wish we were in person and we could get these interactive sessions going, but it is what it is. Um, and Chris, we can do had... that virtually, actually. If we have a smaller group, a little more time, we can do that virtually too. We can create a pretty cool experience with it. That's pretty cool too. I know that you also have like a cohort program that you run with uh, my friends in Seattle from uh, Intrepid, yeah. yeah. Is that, is that hey, a popular Di, option? Di, why don't you speak to that? You, you were the leader in, in, in terms of coming up with that amazing solution. Yes, online, it's semi-synchronous. We do, a facilitator goes through the experience with you. You learn uh, exactly what we, we taught today, uh, but at your own pace, but you're actually in a cohort. It's, it's a wonderful six hour experience that we spread over around three weeks. So we just know we need to meet, you know, all of our learners, all of our participants where they want to be, you know, sometimes it's online, sometimes it's small groups, sometimes it's cohorts of 150, sometimes it's virtual um, in whatever platform, and then I'm hoping once again we'll all be back together face-to-face. -face. But we do try to, again, just meet our learners and, and all of our leaders um, where they need us to be. Cool. Thank you, Diane. So we are going to uh, honor our commitment to give you all a bio break um, at just before the top of the hour, let's say in five minutes time, uh, I'd love for you to hang on and uh, join the conversation. We've got these uh, wonderful four leaders from the Seattle area learning community who've agreed to be tortured and um, 
uh, get questions from me and uh, they've got interesting things to say and uh, I'd love for you to hear them. And then I promise you we've saved time for some open communication. I really, really, really want as many of you as possible to share what your current situation is and how, uh, what you're doing to, to, uh, to innovate and to respond to the constraints. So let's take a, a, a bathroom break and let's say at two minutes to, uh, to 11, we'll, we'll start with our panel discussion.